Hey guys, today we're going to be continuing our September Suicide Prevention Month series with another suicide related topic. And this topic is going to be how you can prevent suicides. So, in this video, I'm going to give us some practical ways that we can help prevent suicides, things that we can do for people in our lives or things we can do for ourselves. And these things are backed by research and a lot of studies showing that these things do work and they do help. So if you are interested in learning more about how you can prevent suicides, then I hope you keep watching this video. So the first thing we're going to talk about is if you suspect that someone is suicidal, ask them directly. So this would look like saying something like, are you having thoughts about killing yourself? So being able to talk about suicide very directly like that, um, there's a common misconception that if you say that to someone, you're going to then put the idea of suicide in their head when they might not have been thinking that. However, that's just not true. And it's actually shown that there's a big sense of relief that someone feels when they're suicidal and someone directly asks them about it. Because a lot of the times when you're suicidal, and this is speaking from my own personal experience, you feel like you can't talk to anybody about this and you have to keep it hidden and you have to keep it a secret. So if someone were to approach me and directly ask me about it, it would make me feel a lot of relief because I would know that I'd be able to talk about it and get some of these feelings out and actually get some help and not just have to keep it to myself. So the first thing that you can do to help prevent suicides is to just ask people that you're, you're concerned about directly if they're thinking about suicide. So the second thing is something that you can do after you've asked someone and after you've started that conversation. And this is to just really listen to someone who is talking to you about their suicidal thoughts. I think it's really, really tempting to try to downplay someone's thoughts or to try to use some toxic positivity to try to make themselves to make the other person feel better. And I think these things are used most of the time pretty with pretty good intentions. Um, you're trying to help. You're trying to be positive. But unfortunately, this ends up making someone who is suicidal feel a lot worse. So you want to avoid saying things like, oh, but things really aren't that bad for you, or other people have it way worse, or you just need to look on the bright side. Because saying those things to someone who is suicidal is just going to make them feel like they can't talk about their suicidal thoughts again, and it's going to have the opposite effect that you want it to. So the best thing that you can do is to really just listen and validate the person and their feelings and what they're telling you. So a third thing that you can do, and this is something I mentioned in the previous step, but we're going to talk about it a little bit more in depth, is to validate. So validation sounds like saying things like, it sounds like things are really painful for you, or I understand why you're feeling this way. And a, a really easy way to validate someone is to just repeat back a lot of the things that they are saying. So if someone is saying like, oh, my life at home right now is so terrible and I feel, you know, I feel so bad about myself all the time, it's making me think about suicide you can then kind of repeat back to them and say, oh, it sounds like things at home are really hard for you right now, and I'm really sorry about that. And that's a really easy way to validate, and it also shows the person that you're paying attention and that you're really listening to them and you're really making an effort to understand. A fourth thing that you can do, um, and this is either for somebody else or for yourself, is that if there is a plan and immediate threat for suicide, then you need to seek proper professional help. Um, if if you're talking to someone else and they see a therapist, this could look like encouraging them to talk to their therapist specifically about these things. Um, it might be making use of a suicide prevention hotline. There's a couple really good ones that I would recommend. Um, 988 is the National Suicide Prevention Hotline in the United States. You can call this number, you can text this number, or you can go to their website and do a live chat. And then there's also another really great resource, and that's the Trevor Project. The Trevor Project is specifically for LGBTQ um, youth, and they provide crisis counseling services, and they are another really, really great resource for someone who is a member of that group who is looking for a little bit more specialized help and someone that would really fully understand their identity. So suicide is something that needs to be taken extremely seriously. So if there is um, an immediate threat if there is a specific plan then it's really really important that the person speaks to a professional whether that's their own therapist um, speaks to someone at a suicide prevention hotline or just goes to the hospital you can 
bring someone or you can bring yourself right to the emergency room and you can get crisis care there as well. But that is something that is extremely, extremely important. And it's really difficult because I think a lot of the times something I, you know, I kind of struggled with is like if someone that I knew was suicidal, but they didn't want to get help. I would have to, you know, get them help because even if they would be mad at me for getting them the help in the moment, them being alive is more important than them not being mad at me. So I would rather get them the help and deal with the, you know, the anger, whatever that came from that. It's really important to as much as possible to involve the person in the process of getting help. So it's Sometimes it's necessary to call for a wellness check. Um, I think those are saved for the more extreme circumstances. So what's really important is to try to make the person who is suicidal feel like they are involved in the process. So if they, if you feel like they need to get some extra help and they're maybe a little bit resistant, you would try to kind of convince them and say like, oh, I really think we should go to the emergency room and I can go with you and we can get you some help that way because I think this is really serious and I'm glad you told me and I'm taking it really seriously. Um, This is something that people have had to do for me. My therapist has has had to do it quite a few times where I have been maybe a little bit resistant. I haven't wanted to go to the hospital when I really should and he's worked really hard to make sure that I'm always involved and I always feel like it's my choice to go even when I need a little bit of extra convincing Um, and that's just because it can be really traumatic to be feeling this way and then have something out of your control happen, like you're just taken to a hospital with no say in it. And that can be traumatic too. Um, Sometimes it is unfortunately necessary, but as often as possible, if someone needs professional help right away, make sure that they are involved as much as they possibly can be. And then the last thing I want to mention about Um, ways to prevent suicide is that long-term therapy is proven to really aid in the reduction of suicidal thoughts. Um, There's a few reasons for this. I think one of the biggest ones is just having someone to talk to. That's been my experience. Um, Having a therapist that I can really talk to about my suicidal thoughts and that I can tell him when I'm feeling worse, I can tell him when I'm feeling better and know that he's going to help help me get the care that I need. That has been huge in helping me feel like I don't have to fight my suicidal thoughts alone. And then also in a lot of long-term therapy, um, individual or group, you can learn a lot of coping skills. So I do dialectical behavior therapy, which is very, very skills focused. And we have a whole section on um, crisis skills. So these are things to do when you are in crisis, things to do when you are extremely suicidal, things to do when you want to self-harm. Um, and those learning those skills has been really helpful too, because in situations where I would normally turn to self harm, the the therapy has helped me get some other skills that I could turn to instead of that. So I think overall the the biggest takeaway on suicide prevention I think is just being able to talk about it and being a very good listener and taking things very seriously. I think. Generally, if someone is feeling suicidal, at least again, speaking from my perspective, like I feel I felt extremely alone with my thoughts and I felt like nobody cared. I was a huge burden. No one was going to want to listen. So having friends that check in on me and that will directly ask me like, hey, how are your suicidal thoughts doing lately Um, has been so helpful. And having really good professional support has also been just extremely life-saving and extremely, extremely helpful for me. I cannot say enough good things about therapy. I think therapy is wonderful. I think medications are wonderful. I think everybody can find their own approach and what works the best for them. But in general, professional help, once you find the professionals that are really good for you and really empathetic and really helpful, can just make a huge difference in your life. So that is it for today's video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Um, I think I'm going to be having probably one more video on uh, suicide prevention topics before the end of this month. And I'm sure the theme will continue to come up in my channel. But if there's anything that you want to hear about, please feel free to also leave those in the comments and I will do my best to make more videos on that. And thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.